think he wants to talk to us. System standard greeting. Choose a voice, please. Voice for interactions. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my Westworld Season 3 Episode 7 video. There was a whole bunch of Easter eggs. Remember, there's only one more episode left. Next week is the finale. So if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Careful for spoilers from the episode. If you haven't seen it yet, we'll do top 10 WTF and Easter eggs as we go along. Starting with number 10, the title of the episode, Past Pawn. The term is actually used in chess and is a reference to a pawn that no enemy pawn can stop from queening. And queening is when one pawn reaches the other side of the enemy's board and becomes a queen itself, like getting a big upgrade. So the title of the episode is a reference to Caleb because Maeve the enemy pawn of Serac can't stop him from getting Solomon's final plan in hand. And it's also a reference to Dolores who prevents Maeve from stopping them, sacrificing herself as another pawn. You could also think of it as a reference to Caleb in the past, as in history past, he was a pawn of the system, taking out all the other outliers without realizing it. Number nine, we go back to Musashi Dolores and we find out what's happening with the Charlotte that survived the attack, the Charlotte version of Dolores that now seems like she's going after revenge, but it sounds like she actually blames Dolores because she's taking out all the alternate versions of Dolores. I'm changing the plan. They also bring back a couple other cameos from season two. We find out that the other body that Maeve was printing is actually Clementine. The reason why she's doing that is because Clementine was one of the other super hosts with extra abilities beyond the regular host, just way more hardcore fighter. So she's one that you would want to have around to help you out if you were going on a tear. They have a pretty cool fight scene, but as Musashi Dolores moves to escape, we find out that they also bring back Hanaro from Shogun World in season two, who cuts him in half as revenge for desecrating Musashi's image. You remember that Hanaro was basically the Shogun World counterpart to Armistice, the ally or the companion of that Musashi. So it's very personal for her, but it's cool to see those characters back. Obviously this will all play into the finale next week. Then eight, we go back to Dolores and Caleb who are riding horses through a field in Mexico on route to this special facility. It's a nice callback to the first season of Westworld when she would ride around with Teddy because Caleb kind of is the new Teddy this season. She even literally says it's just like home and she talks about building a new version of the park, so to speak, a new version of the Wild West where everyone is free and has opportunities just like they modeled the park. So it's like she's trying to create a new version of Westworld in the real world. Naturally, Caleb is having some misgivings, so he starts to question, how many people did you massacre back at the park? A, a lot? Are you going to keep doing that? How many people do we have to kill for this plan to happen? Dolores is committed, and there are a couple of points through the episode where they remind you that machines aren't perfect, they make mistakes. So Caleb is kind of the voice of reason for her in this episode, trying to balance that out. Like, hey, wait a minute, I don't want to kill a whole bunch of people. Talk about chess references, Caleb queening by the end of the episode, gaining that big upgrade. She tells him, I used to just be a farmer's daughter until I needed to be more. And we find out the real reason we're here in Mexico is to go to this facility to find his stolen quote unquote memories. Seven, we go back to the mental institution with Man in Black, Bernard and Stubbs to find out what the next steps are. We find out exactly what the virus's point was. Dolores was using that to actually hack the system and find out where they were storing all of Caleb's memories. One of the other really cool or horrifying reveals during the episode, you find out that in service of reconditioning people, there's all of these apps and systems that Insight has or Rehoboam has that it controls that tries to push people in the right direction and do what it wants them to do. And it's all in service of giving you Caleb's full backstory and exactly how deeply he's been reprogrammed like a host. That's basically what Bernard reveals to Man in Black. You gave him the data he needed to reprogram humanity. And Man in Black just kind of shrugs it off like, well, we needed money for the park at the time. A good comparison in real life would be like Facebook's relationship with Cambridge Analytica. If you remember, they got in really big trouble for sharing people's data for nefarious purposes. So Facebook sold all this data to another company without really understanding how that company was going to use it. That company then went on to use that data to try and change people's behavior. It was really insidious, there are a bunch of lawsuits, and now there are a bunch of systems in place to try and prevent stuff like that from happening again. More data privacy laws. Like I said earlier this season, really the villain this season is more of a metaphor for stuff like Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg using people's data in really evil ways. 
But the real crazy thing about this Man in Black storyline is that he tells them flat out, I'm going to wipe out every single host on the planet and you better kill me because I'm definitely going to kill you later. They do have a bit of a funny moment early on in that storyline when Bernard's like, please don't kill him, Stubbs. We might need him later. I think the cliffhanger at the end of the episode with the shotgun is a bit misleading and they will survive past this moment. Something will happen. Someone will come along to stop him from actually doing that. But number six, we start to get more of Caleb's history. We see him in the same type of memory VR device that Man in Black was using in last week's episode. We had seen flashbacks to this in earlier episodes, so we kind of knew that they were going to pay this off eventually. But you get his history in the military, how he was hunting down insurgents. Later, we learn that some of these were false memories, some of them were not. So they're all drugged up on limbics while they were still in the military. All this stuff with the insurgents really did happen. They got tagged in a counter-strike by other insurgents. That's when it stops being real memories. From then on, his history, all the other flashbacks, those are all implanted memories. While this is all happening, in present day, you also get to see some really cool uses of technology. That gun with the special mini drone and the automated targeting, that's probably something you'll see people in the real military using in the next five to ten years. Even though people are using technology for terrible, terrible things during the Westworld series, there is a lot of the technology that does seem like stuff we're going to have in the next 10 to 20 years. But number five, they meet the old god, Solomon. So Solomon is the precursor to Rehoboam, and as they say, just like Sirach's brother, it got a bit schizophrenic too with the way it projected the future, which is why they had to move on to Rehoboam. I believe the voice that it was speaking with, its default voice, was a younger version of Sirach's brother. I couldn't tell if it was young Sirach's voice or young Sirach's brother's voice. I love the way that it argues with Dolores about how it feels like it's nothing like her. No, we're not alike at all. And then they reveal what happens to all the outliers that don't survive the reconditioning because it's only one in ten that actually makes it through. Sirach hasn't been killing all these people. Well, he's been killing some of them. But for the most part, he just puts them on ice. And as crazy as it sounds like his plan is, it seems like based on the message that he left for his brother, that automated message that they trip as they walk in, that ultimately Sirach's long-term plan is to take humanity to a place in the future where things have changed enough that whatever the model that's operating at that time, whatever Rehoboam is doing, it'll be able to account for those outliers. So eventually it'll be able to reintroduce these people into society, but maybe not for many, many years. So we find out what he ultimately did with his brother. He's just sitting there chilling out on ice in that main system. Dolores very aptly compares this to the basement of Westworld where they stash all the hosts that are broken that they can't fix. Then four, we learn about Solomon's final plan. We heard about this from Sirach a couple episodes ago when he was talking about his brother. The way Sirach talked about his brother, he made it sound like the scenarios that he was using Solomon to run were just absolutely crazy. Some horrific future outcome that would be terrible for everyone. But the way that Solomon and Dolores talk about the final plan, quote unquote, makes it sound like something very different. And it's just Sirach's interpretation that that was an unacceptable outcome. Let me know in the comments what you actually think the outcome of that final plan is. But it sounds like some sort of fusion of outcomes where everyone gets to be free. I think that's the whole idea of Dolores's plan is that she wants the Wild West, quote unquote, to come back. Sounds like it's going to involve wiping the slate clean, but it's going to take some massive shift in society to make that happen. So while this is all happening, though, three, we find out what really happened to Francis and what all the real memories were. We find out that he was a pawn of the system, like the title of the episode, Past Pawn, using that cash app after he'd been reconditioned to go after other insurgents. You are our most successful operative. So when he and his friend Francis goes to hunt down the quote unquote leader of the insurgents that he remembers from his fake memories, we find out that it's Enrico Colantoni. You probably recognize him as a character actor from a bunch of other series, but he's the person that's in charge of the pharmaceutical company that manufactures the limbic drugs that they keep taking through the episode. He reveals the truth of things to Caleb. The reason why you're after me isn't because I'm an outlier. It's because I learned the truth. I asked too many questions about what's going on here. So as they implied a couple episodes ago when Caleb started to remember these things and get the flashbacks, he really was the person that killed his friend. But because the system basically had drugged them up and turned them against each other by offering them crazy amounts of money. When the businessman said that the offer always goes to the person first who has the most to lose, the reason why it went to his friend played by Kid Cudi is because his friend has the little kid with the medical problems that probably cost him a lot of money that he's trying to take care of, so he needs money way more than Caleb does. That's why when they have the big standoff and Caleb is like, how much? He says, enough. 
There were a couple points in the episode where Solomon sort of implies what Caleb's ultimate fate is going to be. He says, you're probably not going to survive this. They also do that during the Man in Black storyline too. Kill me now or I'll kill you later, sort of implying possible future outcomes for the series. Solomon even tells Dolores, if you die, I will adjust my projections. So then obviously, number two, Maeve versus Dolores. Maeve rolls up in full ninja gear with some airstrike support, and they just completely go at it. It's a great fight. I love the way Maeve is using her abilities to talk directly to Dolores' head, but Dolores keeps trying to appeal to her. Look at what they've done to us, to our families. Maeve kind of treats her the same way that Solomon treated Dolores. We're nothing alike, you and I. But it's just really cool to see two super hosts, as I think of them, because they both have these crazy extra abilities operating at their peak, going at each other. So they both pull a couple cool tricks on each other. It seems like Dolores' prophecy from earlier in the episode will come to pass. She said Mabe is probably going to wind up killing me. But before she can, number one, Dolores activates the EMP there that was built to keep Solomon from escaping, allowing Caleb to escape with Solomon's final plan. So this is them paying off the title of the episode, Caleb Queens, because he reaches the enemies of the side of the board, upgrades because he gained all that extra information, the quote unquote final plan with instructions on how to bring it about. The voice speaking to him in his ear sounds like it's coming from that drive. It's just like another version or a smaller version of Solomon speaking to him, but it is a different voice. The thing that they're not totally clear about though is if all those cryo chambers also were taken down by the EMP or if they're on some kind of backup system. I'm assuming that Serac isn't a monster and he rigged up that EMP with a way to allow the cryo chambers to survive. So hopefully the people there are still okay. Otherwise Dolores just killed a whole bunch of people in that warehouse. So just a reminder that Westworld episode 8 next week is the season finale, but the show has been renewed for season 4. They said that there's like a 6 season plan. I don't know what their plan is for the rest of those seasons. Everyone let me know in the comments though what was your favorite part of the episode and if you have any big questions about the episode you want me to include in next week's video. You can click here for all my Westworld episodes and click here for my brand new Marvel Doctor Strange 2 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.